Put up some really good efforts in the last season. Didn't quite cut it for playoffs, but they got to solidify themselves for another season. They put up some consistent results. They were good. They beat the teams that they should have beat. They probably lost to some of the tougher teams there. I want to see them kind of improve on that. And they have a really tough season and a tough uh, side of the bracket or, or group rather to do that in. So let's go ahead and kick it off. Season 43 for both Carry Esports and Snake's Den will begin here on Inferno. The pistol round up and away. Snake's Den picking up this map. And it looks like we're going to get a bit of fast play towards middle. Unless Carry have anything to say about it. A banana push could be imminent at any moment. And here we go. It's going to start off. Freshy finding promise. That's the information. That's going to prod Snake's Den up towards middle. Being very cautious about this one. And there's a little bit of a double setup in play here from Carry Esports, but you can see the sneak through the arch side. This is nasty. I see a gap in that motor smoke. I'm not sure, but they're going to try and still hit this A-bomb site. We'll see how these two players can react here up at apartments. It's going to be tricky, but they do have that long range advantage. Oh, but so many players on one player's screen and they can't get the kills. Pat. And two are able to bring it across the line. A bomb plant is in, and a retake is going to be very, very difficult. Cryptic, join with the team in the middle, though, could make it happen. But Reason behind them, sneaking around, and that's one, and that should make an easy double. But no, Florence to spin back around, finds the kill in a Reason, but the crossfire is too good, and Freshy on 9 HP. He's probably, I mean, save the armor if you can, but this Inferno bomb radius is probably a lot to handle. This is going to be the pistol for Snake's dad. Nice to done. Yeah, it's always difficult to uh, get those A-side retakes, so once you lose those two players in pit or in apartments, it, it quickly goes south, right? It's very difficult to recover. Freshy, see if he can hold on to his armor, but oh. no, he drops there, unfortunately, for him, and that's a great start for Snake's Den. Off to a great pistol round in Season 43. Of course, the Force by going to be answered back from Carry. Oh my, already a Mag-7. Now, that can go anywhere. Now, I know... Darth Mike, alone, he likes baby. to. Okay, Darth Mike likes to bring that one towards the apartments, but the professional oh. play is towards the half wall here. So, okay. yeah, it's a pawn aloning. Yeah, you gotta go for it. Of course, Mike is gonna go for it. <laughs> he knows what his forefathers have done in the past, and he will try to replicate exactly that. Of course, pawn alone not competing in the season of ECL. So, someone has to take his spot, and he will. First kill in for Micro. The Mag-7 being a tough <laughs> hill to swallow, and hitting two headshots there. That's $1,800 pocketed. The money made right back. Using that to full effect right there, and he is taking the name quite nicely. So we'll see how they react, though. It looks like they continue to try and test Micro, and maybe <laughs> for the best, because he is falling off a, just a little bit more passive in approach here. We'll see how long he will hold on to that, though, because he might get some rotations arriving. Noise being made up, Banana. And they've cleared out and still have control of brackets right now. Cryptic jiggling in that sense. And uh, smoke for the cross. I think he's fallen off for the boost. He has, but he can get sent right back on up. Now, my question is, are they going to be able to do any more damage here? It's still three rifles on the other end of this buy. The potential for a flying Mag-7 is so utterly real. Look, I'm trying to make it happen, but it might not. But 30 seconds on the clock, though, this is still a very dicey for Snake's and Two players in position. Knees can't the hit the initial, but the boost, it will get spammed out. And now locked out is Nice. So this plant will come through simply as that for Snake's Den and a 3-3 three three retake. Coming up, Banana, though. Oh, Freshy always hit the timing. Always hit an absolute timing. Oh, but can he hit the shot? He can. The headshot on the reason, and that's going to set things into motion. You see, Promise has to focus between multiple Made different noise. angles. They know he's inside a pool. He's trying to fight his way out of position. Player starting to crunch in, but the CZ at range will get it. Now DJF at the back of the site gets deep down, and it's a force by victory for Carry. Immediate response back right there. It's... Facilitated by the Mag 7s from Micro, but retakes were so composed. Freshy's nailing that timing helps out so much. There's definitely some small details that Snakeston might need to iron out here on some of these pose plants. You had control so much ground. I feel like if you, you got banana control, you should just be covering that. You know, oh, man, those yeah. sort of communication things going on there. And uh, that's a tough round to lose because, sure, you get the bomb plant, you, you get something going for you, but 
The amount of rifles they've invested, it's just gonna immediately reset their economy pretty bad. I mean, look at that. There's three T-side rifles in the hands of Carry Esports this round. And you have to take a full eco with your snakes, and that is gonna hurt. You always wish that you never win the Hill of Pistol round in these kind of situations. And oh, oh. It, they're just Glocks. Come on, guys, guys. We can do better than this. Play some humane Counter Strike. So, welcome to. Welcome to ECL. No, no humanity here. It's uh, CS Eta or something like that. That's 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 <laughs> what we need. That's what uh, that's my that's my attempt on a on a joke yeah. right there. Yeah. That's good. Oh, this HE might hurt. This HE might hurt a lot if the players get spotted or not. Oh, oh no. Oh, this could be a problem. Glock's up close. Micro. No, instead he's gonna line them all up. He, oh, he's out of ammo now. There's starting to be problems. God, come on, guys. We can take him down. Right? You oh, got this. There, there you go. There's the kill. Micro somehow stays alive for three. Ooh. And Nice didn't have any head armor, which was the funniest part about that one. So he goes down to one headshot. But it's a second round for carry either way. Micro might be invincible, I, I think. I don't know <laughs> what was going on there, but able to uh, just tank so much damage. Good stuff from him. Again, this is all... Good stuff to see. It's, it's welcoming him back to ECL as well, but... Oh, yeah. He does have a little bit of that ex experience to boot. Personally, I think he's he's an ECL caliber player when oh, yeah. he was playing for the commission. No doubt about it. Also got his utility primed and ready to go for that banana push. Lots and lots of damage, though. Making some flack here at carry early on. Quite a bit of damage there. Great. Little reaction to the play there that carry we're going for, right? Good utilities thrown in from micro, but all that's met with is a lot of damage. Now, this is just such a consistency that carry like to do right now. Micro just continues to jump spot up banana, clears things out. He's left alone so often right now, and they can get away with this if there is no reaction from snakes to force him off this angle. Um, taking mid brackets control met with a lot of utility and it's in a bit of an awkward position. Is Nice going to go for the spam? It gets very close on Therese and tucked away in towards that corner. Nice is going to back away. Will the curtains drop? Where do Snakes then want to go? They will flash out towards that long side. In the meantime, Micro putting up a fight towards top banana. It'll be Nice to fall first. Better angle, but Cryptic just <laughs> runs right through the smoke. At the same time, though, Micro just went down on the B side of things. And DJF hearing these rotations is going to cut one off. Running back around, it's just leaving it to Florence. He's going to try and hunt for these kills. Now he's going to go back in towards middle. Hello. Spots three players. Hello. What do Snakes then do? There's so much hesitation. 20 seconds on the clock. They're going to turn it back towards A. But if they go up lane, this is where Florence can put up a big time hold. First kill in. He needs to back away and scope in for the next. And he almost lines up a collateral. But instead, it's just another. Cryptic runs through the smoke. But DJF is ready. Just a very intense round, a very hectic one there from Snake's Den, but somehow, some way, they get it across the line. You gotta breathe a sigh of relief there now that that round's done because it was pure chaos. Snake's Den, the nice reposition back in towards that A side. I feel like they had an option to really go A or B. I don't think either one was the right decision. They just chose, and they had to land the kills to close that round out. And, you know, Florence, he did a great job of offering up a defense. He was fighting tooth and nail for that hold, but just not able to uh, buy enough time. Not enough shots in the chamber. They'll go down here. Aggression towards second mid, though. Flash is well placed, but they're avoiding this altogether. <gasps> DJF uh -oh, uh -oh, let them oh, slide no. on by here. He's able to mow down <gasps> three nice transfers. Reason actually going to help out in that, but all is well here. They should uh -oh. be able to close this one out. Um, Hold on. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Lawrence gets got out. and um, Wow, Micro hits a nice dink at that range from top middle to the T steps. That's about it. Despite getting this force by carry, I've not been able to pick up any of these following rounds. It's been Snake's Den on the bounce back that's been there. No doubt. They've quickly bounced back as well. They're holding on to a lead at the moment. So, good start from them. Obviously not the ideal start that they were going for, but they didn't get caught in these force by wars immediately after. They just went for the full eco, then they really forced up here and now, and honestly can respect that, especially given the fact that we're seeing the uh, fruits of that decision. Love this boost, though. See if it catches them off guard, Florence. No, he gets uh -oh. plucked out. 
No, he was on the boost and promise. I, he ought to have like flicked up and knocked him out of the sky. You can see the blood stain up top. And now Micro trying to push down towards bottom of Banana. Right now, Snake's Den landing a lot of punishing kills onto carry esports early. I found on all the opening duels here. Warranted Micro. Two of the more aggressive players. Taken down quickly, so. So far, so good. Still have to deal with Cryptic, though. EJF has a sight line, but no, he slips on past it. All is well. They're doubling up towards V, and. For now, this is the wrong read. For carry. Gonna wheel the op up into position for promise. I'm telling you, Cryptic, Cryptic can definitely hold this down. Oh yeah. I think he's done it before. If they don't have a Molly for his position, there's gonna be some problems. See the nades start to come through. DJF on the edge of it, and Cryptic gets the spot. Easy kill for him. And now with 30 seconds on the clock, oh, no. oh that Molly doesn't land properly That's rough. though. Oh, oh, now Cryptic has a real task ahead of him, but he finds the next kill. Reload is in. He needs some help though. Player on the balcony in reason will wrap him up and find the double kill. A crazy double there from reason. And now a 1v2 here for Freshy. And with the smoke that smoke going down, it's gonna be very, very tough. Buy himself some space, Molly towards the site. Oh, uh, but it doesn't quite land properly here. Freshy, he's gonna walk through the smoke tunnel, but being held by Promise, who will just hit the simple flick. And that is Snake's Den up to four. It's a really awkward round right there from Kerry, because Cryptic, he sure can hold that down. And he was doing just that, but if he was able to just get that extra little element of support in a motor rotate where... These could have helped out there. I think he really could have done a whole lot more, or at least all of carry could have. But that support doesn't come through, and in fact, that Molly completely locks him yeah. from rotating in. That's tough stuff. Yeah, you're going to need time out to uh, talk that one over. Take a little breather here, because some small mistakes, small errors, and, and Snakes did do it a great job to punish that. Yeah, that. I mean, if that Molly landed out towards lane, that allows yourself to get yourself into position and even into like a safer one that's that can't be seen from the apartment's balcony I mean, cryptic just had so much to look at for that section you know in the fights that he got he was able to win them but yeah overwhelmed towards the end and a cool sick double kill there from reason even you have some new players in the ecl it's good to get some introductions from these folks and cryptic Gonna try for that, but DJF will quickly punish, and we should see a systematic round here from Snake's Dead. This is starting to be a bit of a competitive game here, Cole, as uh, that's a sick swing there from DJF. One by one, they all go down. Three separate fights there. Understandably so, right? You just kind of want to find some sort of gap. The default right now working wonders for Snake's Den. They have some aggressive elements to establish control. They also have some players holding for, for angles and just keeping themselves safe. So, mm -hmm. honestly, this is great stuff out of them. Obviously, they're map pick, sure, but they're still looking good at it. They're, they're not getting, you know, swiped aside. They're not getting punished by some of the experienced players here on carry. They're doing a great job of fighting back here early on as well. I think they've been doing more of the punishing as well. Specifically, the top banana fight has not been going well for carry esports. And more towards middle... Florence has been shut down by promise on a couple of these peaks. Micro is going fishing for $900. Ooh, and he might find something and a little bit more. Instant headshot. Thanks for the M4 upgrade. I think it's time for him to head out and flee the scene. Pat? Good chase here. He... You don't want to cross the bridge. He'll tuck away. And I think he'll be just fine. Surely. Oh, good. Unless he peeks in, yeah, he will not. So there's some extra firepower going in their way. Not the start they were hoping for, that's for sure, though. Off to a bit of a slow one here. And like you said, they're just getting punished, right? You do expect some of these newer ECL teams to come in with a bit of the nerves, right? Your first ECL game can always be nerve-wracking. So uh, you could imagine that, you know, they would be slow to start. That's not what we're getting out of Snakes in, though. They're coming in ready to play. Not showing any of the sweat. 
Towards top banana this time. Big peek being attempted here. Nice trying to get into the action as well. Player towards close and caught with utility in hand. Shoot falls. And a four versus five ensues. But nice almost falls towards the end of it. At the end of the day, though, Carry finally working with a man advantage. That's a lot of work to get a man advantage. Now, of course, it's well worth it. It's a 4v5, and you still have brackets control, so you've got a lot going for you. You've actually changed up some of the positioning as well. Cryptic is the one sticking around here towards B. He's been spotted here. He's still hanging around. He's shiggling every last corner here, able to avoid that HE. Taking 15, though. Look, he wants to fight. He wants to keep the pressure applied, but he doesn't realize what lies right around the corner here. Pat. Gonna make a move on him. He has his knife out. Cryptic calling him for the flashbang, but he's way past it. Oh. The spray not controlled, though. And Cryptic will walk away the victor. Messy spray there from Pat. The last thing he expected was someone right next to the closed corner. Micro trying to take a superior angle on the play. I think Snake's and they're just gonna commit up the lane side. A missed shot, though, from Florence. They're gonna get some space up. Same time, though, DJF does fall. Just around the edge of the smoke, Freshy just being quite the nuisance, and I think this round could just slow down to be a save, all things said. I mean, they're rolling in dough over there in Snake's Den, but there's no reason to commit to this. We're just going to hold on to their guns. Yeah, pretty wise decision. Just call it a day here. 10k on promise. 5k on reason. There's no point, though, in just throwing away your life in uh, probably a round that you just know you're not going to. Swing, it's so hard without the resources, without any utility, to crack open any sort of crossfire on A-Site, so... Snake's then just gonna call it a day. Showing some discipline here, and... Carry able to bounce back. We'll see how long they can maintain this stay afloat. I think still these opening rounds from Snake's Den have been solid. Fight towards, particularly towards Banana, finally goes the way of carry as they get more or less more in their face. Uh, they had that smoke that extinguished the barrels, Molly. So we'll see if that replicates itself again or how things will shift once more. As Snake's Den, not really committing to anything too too early on. It's more or less carry that's seeding the ground here. Yeah, in this run, they're definitely giving more space than. Uh... The last, last round they just brought it out towards Banana early on with the triple up. This time, not so much. More of a passive approach there. I did, yeah, I thought they dated themselves, but uh, <laughs> looks like they're all healthy. HE sometimes they're <laughs> a bit of a dud, no doubt, but they try and retake brackets control. It's met with a perfect smoke from Carry. Yeah. They're gonna try and run through it anyways, though. Oh, the Flash passed it, but it worked. It finds Cryptic, and now they start to split up towards the R side. Flashing, though, at the same time, oh. and Florence spots out two quick quote on the first, but DJF makes his way out of the apartments, and Florence caught out in the open. It's all on a freshie. A literal 1v4 in front of him. How many can he find? He's able to survive and get a ton of damage, switches guns, and still is fighting. He's somehow still alive in the pit, and now the rescue operation needs to start for carry. Freshy still alive, but Micro starts to fall, and Pat just holding down the line. Somehow, Freshy has survived inside of the pit for all this time, but he's trapped, and I think he's a dead man here, Cole. As it will be Snake's Den up to six. Nicely done. That's super explosive right there from Snake's Den. Not often do we see, like, uh, that, that sort of... Quick execution all the way from brackets, but they are so decisive. That was a clear game plan, and Snakes didn't nail it, right? You saw it before the, you know, execution took place, before they threw a single bit of utility towards brackets, hmm. they had every last game plan down to a T, including the, the flushing out of Cryptic, the quick trades, the dealing with Florence's op as he re-peeks in towards Moto. There were so many details going in on that execution, and Snakes didn't, they had a button down. Too many angles to handle, and Snakes then understood how to take advantage of that. Create one problem, and then create three more. Towards that art side. Hey, man, they have the lead. It's They're up 6-3 to three against a team that was one match away from playoffs just last season. 
definitely a meaningful start here on Inferno for Snake's Dead. I have to see them establish a little bit more map control, something along those lines. If they keep on getting allowed to execute in that fashion, they will be golden there. Nice instant kill from Fresh. He still takes a little bit of chip damage, but look at the wow. cohesion there. It will be Florence having coverage. Meanwhile, Freshy does get spammed down through the wall, so... Not yet equalized, but still maintaining a nice pace here as Snake's Den. They always have a reply. Will they be able Incredible. to get the speed execution? Snake's Den think they have the read. They think they're only running into one player, but there is two. And Micro... Oh, we are just back to both players! Unbelievable! How is Chewie alive? He gets the kill, gets the damage, stays alive. And somehow, Carrie have taken so many losses. This is a safe consideration. Unless Snakes then decide to push. That's the only win condition here for Carrie. If the fights come their way, there is a chance. But Nice being so low as first contact is going to be a problem. Flash in and they turn away from him. He goes down early. The off of Florence hits the floor. And that's that. 7-3 to three is Snake Send. That was a 3v... Five at one point. Yeah, I mean that that's insane right there. They they walk into B site with three players versus two, and oftentimes you'd think, oh, that's super easy. With all the utility that Kerry had to counteract the aggression, they should have had that round nine times out of ten. But again, the explosiveness that Snake didn't bring to the table right now is a little bit too much for Kerry to bear. They, you saw, I mean, Chewy is so explosive that he's passed their flash bings in utility before they even realize it. Oh boy, but we're getting an aggressive move. He's inside of the underpass. Oh, but he- No, he can't get the kill on DJF so low. He will complete it. Get the AK. But now, and we'll find Reason. Reason falls off. And now all three players out towards Banana. And a Mag 7 around the corner. Oh, but he's only able to land 81 onto Pat. And now Nice has to put up the whole 30 HP to his name now. He needs a 1D... And probably, I don't take much more out of him. As Pat will clean him up, B-side is theirs. The gap in the smoke, though, and low HP on Pat can still make it work. There's a chance. Fresh is going to try and make do on it. He almost, he will find two kills. Fresh, he's on for the ace. He started this round in alt middle, and now he's made his way out towards the B-site. A 1v2 for Chewie. Spotted out, but no kill on a cryptic. Darkna gets swung on out, Ooh. but he taps him out for the 1v2. In the debut match, Snake's Den are up 8-3. to three. Winning the half on the T-side as well, just absolutely insane right there. Again, there is no fear in these guys' eyes right now. They're playing like it's any old match. This is their first in ECL together. Absolutely insane when in every last clutch. Keeping their composure. This is stunning stuff. I don't know if Kara are going to be able to reply here. But if they do, it has to come soon. It has to come in this round. Another good purchase. They cannot allow for Snakes to, 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 to just keep this lead up. I mean, unbelievable. Now Micro completely blind. What? They just get shut down towards Top Banana. A lineup for Pat. 14 and 6, 120 80 yards. Only Cryptic who could possibly stop this play. And now getting spammed down. Now finished off. They know that's the B site, surely, as three players have gone down. And this could be Snakes then taking a 9 to 3 lead. We could be here for a long one. Man, oh man. This looks incredible. Again, man, they are coming in, firing on all cylinders. I love what we're getting out of Snakeston. It seems like they are well practiced, well oiled machines, at least on Inferno so far. That's what I'm getting out of them. There's no reply. Again, they come in with a very quick game plan. They're, they want to establish mm -hmm. some control towards Banana, and they just grab it. This time, Pat with a double entry, he gets traded out instantly. Like you said, Cryptic the only one able to reply, but at that point, you just can't afford one for once. This is a certain surprise for sure. Snake's dead. The performance so far. I mean, none of these players have had the opportunity to play at this level. But 9-3, a 
economy still shattered for carry. Hey, man. There is a serious chance we could we could be going the distance here. We always expect the ECL warm welcome for a lot of these newer teams, but they give the greeting right back. No doubt. This is uh, some pretty sick stuff here. It's going to be another Mag 7 for Micro. At least he has a uh, play style, and he keeps it consistent. Looks like we're getting a little bit desperate with some of the aggression here, Florence. Is he going to just peek out towards the middle? He is. He's going to run running. down middle. What is going on here? He does land the tag. That's nice. And he gets out like a ghost. Some fancy footwork there. Florence trying to take matters into his own hands. Getting a little bit dangerous with it. Getting loose, but maybe that's Off what they angle. need. Ooh, oh. off angle there. I think that could have been Florence getting another if he stuck around for it. But he didn't want to find out. So snakes then gear up in towards the apartments. There's a double setup for this play. If they try to go through, I think I know exactly what's about to happen here, Cole. Smoke in towards Moto, flashes in, Cryptic not blind, one bit, make it two, trade it out, but so much damage on the rush that Freshy can surely clean this one up. Molly does go in, Freshy is going to get burned out, and Florence playing a massive off angle on the site, could not hit the shot, but Freshy will clean up. And with the proper setup in play, Carry Esports will be able to lock this one down and at least secure a fourth. Promise has something to say, that, that shot sounded like it hurt. And oh, it's no. a flick on to the next. 16 HP. And he, I think he just spotted where both players are. 30 seconds to think about this one. Wall bangs on towards the site. He's going to smoke out the site next. They're going to try and spam him out. Is he going to sneak up close to the smoke? Trying for these wall bangs, but barrel spotted, surely. Yeah, he'll be finished off by Micro, but still making that one dangerous there was promised. But Carry Esports notched themselves a fourth. Yeah, that's, uh, again, some sick shooting. Just looking good in general, even in lost rounds. And finally, we see that Snake, Stint, Snake Den's aggression, you know, their execution does go their way, but that's because you know, of one small flash. If Cryptic was blinded up there, I, I think he would have re very much so struggled to get the multi-kill. This could have been a good game plan. A lot of attention on their apartment side, though. Since they can't close that one out. All in all, though, Looking to change things up. Are they going to go for another one of these boosts? Lawrence and Fresh, he's just interested in taking some space. In the meantime. Holding his apartment set up. Oh, there is an off. Wow, even what? going for the spam. Unbelievable from Reason the Reed. It is traded out by Freshy, but still, Reason. They had to set up. They had every trap ready for him, but... He still succeeds. God, I don't... That's stunning awareness right there. Very sick stuff. I'm sure Cryptic's aim was just thrown off his position. He felt a little bit uncomfortable sticking around. Even though that spam didn't do any damage, it forces him off for just a mere second. Enough to find the kill. And enough to set up this B play quite nicely. Rotations are very far removed, so it is only up to these two to offer up the defense. It's the come at me bro strategy. As they tuck away, turtle on towards the site to boost the one way, but it is spammed out. They do recognize it, but Micro right underneath it. It's such a ratty position. He's on 3 HP, and he's surviving somehow. Dancing around the site. It will be cleaned up, I promise. Can he complete the clutch? 1v3 in your opening game is no easy feat. I'm planting inside the smoke. Promise. He can duck away. He can dance around it. He can be a problem right now. Four snakes, and he makes his way out towards new box. Now to complete the 1v3, and four to the glass cannon. Promise comes up with a 1v3 in his debut game in ECL. That is stunning right there, man. Pulling things back in the new box. There's just no better spot to do it as well. You just isolate all those fights. Micro putting up a hell of a defense. Both of the B players holding on so steady. You would have thought it was enough, but not if Promise has anything to say about it. This is insane. I did not expect this I out of Snakeston. Oh, man. The, the ECL warm welcome has just been handed back to Carry Esports. Here, hold this. Florence. Offing now. Could Ooh. not hit the shot. He will hit the next flick on the path, though. 
Kind of saving himself again, consistently going glass cannon, but this time Cryptic Reason will find the kill again, and Freshy is not there to trade once more. Care Esports are in a bind. Micro. Micro. Uh, oh, he will hunt <laughs> down the kill. <laughs> the Mag 7 knows no mercy. What alone's name isn't safe on this map anymore. You just might have to come back for another season of ECL and ah. reclaim that spot. Creeping up lanes very quietly. This is going to be a surprise here for Carry as Micro gets ran down. Fresh inside of the pit. Surely he can't survive this. He's running out with his USP and he takes a fight with a Tech 9. 2v2. Player inside a pit. Nice. On the angle, Reason is going to swing out, but picks the right timing. Nice is crosshair in the wrong position, and Florence is going to oh run through gosh. right into the Venezuelan's crosshair. A 4K for him, and an 11 4 half. We need to take a break. Love it, you wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. to season 43 it's an 11 4 half for the new boys on the block snakes then up unbelievably seven rounds on their ecl debut a couple of clutches some moments definitely already for these boys 
as they are certainly playing with some gusto tonight. I'm fine. I'm joined by one McHenry in season 43. His name is Cole. He's also goes by Exner. Uh, we might need to hold this introduction <laughs> for a little bit, though. Into the B side. Carry want to make no mistake about this play. The dual Beretta start off for promise. Multiple kills coming through, but Chubi can't hit a shot. Has to reload towards the back of the side, getting ran down by the whole team. And now it's just reason. He tries to make himself at home, but he gets dealt with. They're looking like a chance there for... For Snake's dead, but it's looking like Harry wants to pick up this pistol. Just a 1v3 here for DJF. Perhaps at a little bit of a timing. He's making his way out and towards the site, but has a crossfire to disassemble. Gonna have to take some luck. Might have had this it. one apart. Maybe, maybe he does. Wait, he's already on the site, but oh. no. Micro, that's a fast shot. That's Carry with the pistol. Make sure they play those pose plants properly. All is well, and honestly, I feel like that... Probably should have been a snake stin round. They had the right positioning. I think there was just that new box player couldn't quite land the shots. Sometimes that'll happen to you. So you gotta wipe that one off. Fear it from your memory and bounce right on back. Like they will do here and now with a force by two MP9 scout, couple deagles here. They're really bringing some energy with this purchase. We'll see how it pans out for them. Of course, Carrie looking to try and get back into this. It's certainly a recoverable half. I will say though, it's gonna be a bit tricky to do on your T side. So, we'll see. Again, it's still... I think Snake's then really benefited from that from their T-side, just having really good reads on the situations. Also able to deal with a lot of the protocols for carry. Oh, yeah. Again, numerous times, I'll talk about it over and over again. The banana fight was just not working for that carry esports defense. See, if they, can, if they can replicate that on the CT side, I will be impressed for sure. We'll see if they got the same sort of protocols. Again, nice read so far. A little bit gambly stacking over 3B, but it's the right read, so all is well. Deep CT smoke thrown in, though. Oh, are they going to try and split this, too? He gets the first through the smoke. Lots of damage, but there's another one right behind. And then Promise is there to clean up. He secures the man advantage. And with Micro low, that scout can still deal some damage. Leaping around the site. Micro being quite aggressive. You go for smoke spam and get spammed back out. Could be some problems. Snakes in, they want to make no mistake. They already want to try this retake. There's a gap in that smoke. Florence gets past it. Crossfire assembled between the two. And opening up, Reason starting to duel out against the Galil of Micro. Now Promise begins to make his move bomb at the halfway point. But Florence with a great shot. Now looking to push through the smoke. It's They will get dealt with. Carry do hold on to the 2v3. And with a force by victory, or at least the anti-force and the conversion here. Harry can start to run up some rounds. No doubt. We all know Zonic's Law. You get yourself that uh, first gun round as well, and you'll be you know, nearing the tide scoreline, and all of those first half woes will be null and void. You can get right back into this game. Five USP, so discipline from Snakes, and they're just trying to get on these gun rounds as soon as possible here, so this one's going to be a wash, especially if they just rush B straight up. Yeah, there's... Not going to be a single problem with this round. I mean, they're still assembling boosts on lane while they're executing B. This is going to be uh, a quick one. For sure. And so, um... They'll sprint down middle. But make sure you funnel that one in the MAC-10. We have... Uh, it's a carnival game right here. <laughs> oh, but it's all team kills! <laughs> it's all team kills! Back you're gonna get a competitive cooldown for this oh, one. Oh no, you only got like 10 more damage to do before you get the 30 minute ban. Oh my goodness. We might have a 4v5 in our hands in a little bit, but either way, Carrie, pick up the round. Oh boy, Pat. That's that's no good for the KD either. He's still 18 and 13, all right. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, I guess that's not too much of a concern. He could afford a couple of those. In fact, Keep running into his crosshairs. Better than giving over $300 to your opposition, I guess, at the end of the day. Pat's just thinking big brain. So we might oh. have a little bit of little techie on our hands. Yeah. All good. All good. 
We'll surely get back into this game. It is Tuesday. Tuesday. It's good about Tuesdays. Tuesdays are like a perfect day as like a counter strike, uh, like a counter strike commentator, player, community member to like talk about stuff because like it's right after the grand final Sunday, and who wants to wake up on a Monday morning? After gobbling up some Counter Strike, that's your rest. Your rest day. Your rest day is Monday, and then and then we're back in the swing of things. Come on now. So in this world, I'm assuming you're coming through from like a, a talent point of view, right? You worked a long best of five final. You don't yeah. want to hop into Monday and be like, oh man, oh. let's do a podcast about this best of five final. <laughs> no, you, you give I just yourself cast it for breather. for like seven hours, right? Yeah, you give yourself the breather, the room to work with. You were there on Sunday, no? Sunday. Oh, I was watching, yes, on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. So, Monday, Monday was my day off. My day off was actually spent. I was... Do, do I, like, do I tell everyone about my, my pastimes and my hobbies? No, I keep that one to you. No, I'm just playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's not that bad. Like, <laughs> no, 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 it's cool. I think it's I cool. only play trading card games competitively. Like, come uh, on. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone, will, everyone would love to hear about that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, no, yeah. That wasn't sarcastic. That wasn't sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone would love to hear about it. Yeah, but uh, anyways, anyways, I was, I was in Minneapolis. Uh, Good place, I heard. Minnesota. Yeah, so I came, so in the main event, there was like a thousand people competing. I did horribly. I don't even talk about my score. Um, but in the three versus three side event, uh, there were like 42 teams and I came third place with my boys. I got carried. I'm going to be honest. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Um, a win is a win. Shout out my boy, Ryan and Jonathan for carrying me there. Ryan and Jonathan. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, you always need to. Would they have won? Would they have gotten third place without you? That, actually, you that actually, way. I had to. So basically, how it works is you play all play simultaneously um, against like you know a different a player from a from a team. So in essence, um, you know, if if you win two matches uh, against their opponent, then you eliminate that team and move on. Yeah. I had to clutch it up one time uh, because one of our guys lost, so I actually had to clutch it up to stay in the event. So uh, there you go. Without me, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't get their prizes. Even though I only won a... That was the only match I won during that entire... During the five rounds that I played, so... There you go. Let's not well, talk we'll see about if, it. Uh, we'll see if... Gary can continue to clutch up. They got a little bit of a comeback. Yeah. After going their way, and... Uh, it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, and to keep it up. Though. This is the first gun round, so... Maybe we shouldn't speak too soon to see... Until we see how these rifles roll out. You know, win this round, and I think we're really talking here for carry, especially with Mac 10's Galils. They're already starting to stack up this A site with four players. Perhaps looking to re aggress towards that bracket side. A great Molly, though. Interesting utility tossed in by carry esports to gain themselves basically mid control for free. They're kind of telegraphing this quite a bit, though, here. Not a lot of B-presence, so... Stakes, in, in theory, they could hold their positions, but they do not. Instead, they actually do cheat a rotator back in towards the B-side. And it's going to weaken up this A-side defense just a little bit, ever so slightly. And there's still plenty of time for Gary Esports to reroute as well. So things looking on the up and up in terms of the control. So promise, jiggle peeking, Ooh. but Micro caught a glimpse of him and promise is gone. Now they try to crunch onto the site, but 20 seconds remaining, and they still- This is their own smoke they're met by. They're gonna walk through it, and DJF needs to put on a massive, massive hold. But he busts out the first, he finds Cryptic, so oh, much no. damage! Reason just lined up a double kill! It's all over the place here from Carry, and with 10 seconds remaining, Freshy, he's looking to drop down, and mid-air will get the kill in a Reason. Now a 2v2, and the B players have arrived, but they're gonna make, make this one quick. They know where both players are exactly. Take their sweet time about this one. Flashbang tossed into the sky. Crossfire between them and Florence on the site, but Freshie will strike first. Now Pat, 1v2 spots the first and spins for the second, and that is a gut punch of a round right there. Carrie, we're looking golden for it on the A site, but Snake Zen make it do 12 to 7. There's just no way you're able to break 180 degrees crossfire like that and make it look easy. 
Pat, that is unbelievable. And Carrie, like you said, they just got a punch to the gut. That's going to be a hard one to bounce back from. That's a frustrating round to lose because you know you have it in the bag. It's a two on one. He has to flick all the way around to get that done. But Pat, man, he gets it right back. Got two team kills in the round, two rounds prior. But wins a 1v2 to make up for it. Now Snake's Den have the opportunity to take control of the game. It swings back and forth just like that. Little pendulum in this match so far. In the second half more so. Yeah, at least get a little back and forth here. Some fight coming through and watching the jump peak is nice. It's a little bait and switch though as the smoke could land towards the bottom of banana, but still just playing this contact game. DJF needs to take contact first and then that's going to be the peak coming through from Pat. DJF, I'm close. Oh no. Oh, that's... Dang. That's a fast shot from Nice. It's been a quiet game from him, but that can turn it around. Certainly should here, especially if it's going to bring a rotation back in towards B. They're sending in another player, so again, it is only going to be a, the duo here on this A side to defend. Sure, it's two players you can rely on, Chewy and Reason, and they can deliver, but a difficult task at hand. It's a power position, though. The apartments, no one's actually moving through it, so... He can hold out from the balcony, and this could be an unexpected position. Now, 20 seconds left on the clock. Reason drawing all the attention, and he almost has a lineup for four. Still, Chewy behind the smoke strikes down, and now can they even try to plant that bomb? They're not going to let Micro even get the chance. Eight seconds remaining. They'll try and stick it in, but he spotted out, and Chewy's going to lock it in with the MP9. That is a catastrophe for Carry, as we see Snakes then make their way to 13. And... That's another round where Reason just able to line up so much. Overperforms in a position so difficult to play in. Right there. Finds himself the two-piece. Helps out from long range. With the Mac, uh, MP9 from Chewy. That, that's just great. Little double up on the defense, right? You shouldn't be able to get away with that much when you only have two players in theory. But they make it look really easy. They're going to sprint up. This is going to be a mad dash here for Carrie oh to try and make goodness. something happen. So much damage dealt. One more HE. Oh, man. This HE could touch down and maybe doesn't even need to because it's going to be a reason on cleanup duty. Chewy to clean that one as well. And it will just be cryptic in a 1v4 in an impossible situation that Pat is going to finish. 14 to 7. The debut map for Snakes Den is two rounds away. And it could be a quick day at the office here on Inferno. We could be looking at just an instant closer. And and it really, to be honest, little life on this map for Carrie. If this gets closed out in this fashion. I mean, this would include a pistol round one. And then if you remember, they actually won the round after Snake Stint's pistol. They, they ecoed them. So, in essence, they had like... Five rounds for free on just full ecos from carry. Now that's a great start, though. Micro gonna Hold open on. up proceedings. Micro's gonna keep going, too. Right through the molly. Cryptic running through to trade. He's so damn low, and it drops it's the bomb. bomb right in the lap of promise. But I'm not sure he wants to consider fighting for it. He is so low. He's waiting for backup, and... In the meantime, Nice will get his hands on it. They want to stick around and fight. They want to keep pressing the issue, and that's where Chewie is going to swing through, find two, and probably seal this map away as it's just Freshy in a 1v4. And inside of the apartments, is Beret has been spotted, and this round will meet its logical conclusion as it's 15-7 to 7 for Snake's Den. Opening pick, and nothing thereafter. That is absolutely absurd. Welcome back to uh, ECL for another season, Carrie. You got to play against these guys. And man, oh man, are they showing up, man. They came prepared here on Inferno. They came in with every trick of the trade. Every reaction just seems to be really promising. Even on those, some of those B-rushes where they have the counter utility, it's doing so much damage. They are nailing this map here. Man, 
And now with a a patchwork buy. Difficult one. For sure. Cryptic gets the creep up towards lane though. Silently, without a no without a sound. Looking for his 1v1, but. Retake on Banana, there is a boost assembled, but Chewie is going to disassemble that one quickly. Cryptic now, up close, lane, with two players, and Reason, he does get the spot, but, oh, the crossfire, too much to handle. A 1v4 to Fernies, and we will see Snakesden, a group of players who have barely a drop of ECL experience to their name, win their debut map in Season 43. Call that a surprise. That's certainly surprising to me. I cannot believe they shut that one down in such clean fashion, man. That is a great debut for these young guys. And uh, honestly, man, if this is what we're going to get out of Snakeston in this series and for the rest of the season, we have so much to be excited about this team being in this season. I know. And I mean, they can pull... what.